I'm honored to bring out my friend Vivek. Vivek, come on up. Vivek Sharma, CEO and founder of Mobile Inc. And take it away. You're going to tell us fantastic stories of when you and I used to sit next to each yeah, other. Yeah, and exactly. You look exactly the same, except you had a full head of hair. Okay. 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 You take it. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> it's funny. We actually uh, we moved in uh, to General Assembly around the same time, about four years ago, and um, I, I remember sitting diagonally across from uh, Evan, who was subleasing a desk. And, uh, you know, the common thing we noticed about each other is we were a few years older, being 29 years old in, in that group at GA, than some of the other people. And uh, I was working on a marketing software company, and Evan is a marketing genius. So, um, you know, if you, if you kind of do the Mad Men analogy, he's the, the bald Don Draper to my Indian Roger Sterling. <laughs> So um, at Movable Inc., we're a contextual marketing company that happens to do email really well, and we're headquartered here in New York. And we think a lot about uh, the power of imagery and the power of photos to compel people, to get them to engage, to get them to interact with you. And you know, where we think marketing is headed, it's really about creating an experience and over overselling a product. So creating an experience that delivers on the promise of a brand. And so I want to talk a little bit more about how uh, we see imagery and photography changing and being used in more creative ways inside marketing. So let me start with, uh, with a survey right here. This is a campaign that Allen Edmonds, a clothing retailer, ran recently. And there were two different types of creative that they wanted to test out. Uh, creative A that you see on your left side uh, is a nice fabric background, some interesting copy, and Creative B is has a few more product shots and a different type of imagery. And so how many of you think Creative A performed better? Okay, just, just only five hands or so. And how many think Creative B performed better? Okay, the vast majority of you. So this is the kind of thing that happens in marketing departments, email marketing departments, and people go by gut feel and decide, is this going to be effective or not? Well, most of you are wrong. Uh, as it turned out in this particular case, and this could be completely different in the next campaign, uh, people are voting with their engagement, with what they choose to view and read and click on. And something that was impossible before was that ability to test creatives on the fly. And so this is something that uh, dynamic creative, it's a use of dynamic creative where you're able to A, B, and multivariate test. And while an email campaign is running, your audience is telling you what's working really effectively and it's switching that over to the winning forms of creative on the fly. And these are types of things that uh, happen in other areas and in, in web marketing, but email marketing has, um, has been a little stagnant and this has been formerly impossible. So um, a huge lift and click through, and this is one example. There we go. So this, this uh, clicker is not nearly as real time as an email could be. Uh, so images change in real time. And the analogy that I use, if you were to walk outside here and head over to Times Square, now you're surrounded by giant billboards. And uh, for the most part, everyone is seeing the exact same message. Millions of people walk by, and you're seeing the same creative that's being used. And contrast that to the experience of walking down Park Avenue into any boutique. And the second you walk in, somebody notices you. Uh, they see you're a little harried in the middle of the day. You might be in there buying something for your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. Uh, they're kind of sizing you up and figuring out how much you're likely to spend, what kinds of products you're interested in, peppering you with a few questions back and forth. And so that's a very different experience. That's an opportunity where a real person is sitting across and sensing and responding to your context and understanding that and tailoring the message to you. Uh, unfortunately, that's very one-to-one, -one, and it's been impossible to do that at a massive scale, especially when uh, creative bottlenecks exist. And we know imagery works in marketing. Uh, over and over, the statistics prove that even including an image in search results gets people to engage. It, it builds a trust. It gives people a sense of uh, what they are buying. And especially if you're a consumer brand, if you sell any sort of physical product, if there's a fit and finish and feel to it, today the best way to communicate that is through imagery. So 
So images are important, but as we've mentioned, for the most part in email marketing today, they're very static. And so there's a challenge in bringing that dynamism that you might see in the real world into a marketing program like this. And so your context is changing. Uh, you might be very similar to me. Uh, when I get up in the morning, one of the first things I'm checking is my email. I have my iPhone. I'm running into work. Uh, I, I'm at my desktop during lunch. Uh, some of you may be scrambling to get into that flash sale in time, and you've got a big, giant screen where you're making your purchases. And then in the evening, you're back at home, and you're reclining on your sofa on your tablet. So this is a new world. Um, and actually, the next step of that world, I'm wearing an Apple Watch. Um, hey, there's another way to reach me. And so um, consumers are choosing how and when they choose to engage with you. And this is really difficult. If you thought things were tough 15 years ago, keeping up with the vast number of devices and social channels and uh, different channels that your customers engage is incredibly difficult. And that adds a creative burden to any team that is thinking about marketing content and copy and photography and that sort of thing. But it's imperative to think about some of these. And I want to share just three ideas today that you could use to tailor an experience, create a very contextual experience based on some cues your customers are telling you the moment they choose to engage. Let's think about the weather. Uh, we actually have a giant chalkboard drawing of this cartoon uh, right now. Spring just started. So every season, we're kind of changing that up on our blackboard. But um, you know, the weather changes so quickly. And especially retailers have to think about this. And unfortunately, there's a huge amount of information to crunch and to decide and to figure out how to tailor offers uh, depending on the weather in your area. So here's one example. Uh, we work with Airbnb. And it's possible you've seen some of these emails and are completely unaware that the imagery and the creative and the copy are being tailored for you based upon the weather outside. In this case, it was very important to them uh, for their customers who happen to be in very cold weather areas, uh, if you live in New York or Massachusetts or anywhere in the Northeast this winter, um, you know you were right in the bucket, right in the segment that, that these Airbnb marketers were looking for. And it would detect at the moment you open that email campaign, they, it happens to be snowing outside or it happens to be 15 degrees outside, and it would give you a very sunny destination that you could think about and houses you could rent. And you'd get a totally different... Um, message and creative if you happen to be down in Florida or in California. Similarly, this can be done in retail. So Allen Edmonds, again, uh, most of their customers are in the Northeast and in the Midwest, where it's very cold. But again, the types of offers they'd put in front of you would vary significantly based on the weather outside. So in this case, a, a very simple weather targeting rule. If it's above 41 degrees, we want to show you rain gear and umbrellas. And if it happens to be colder than that, uh, let's show you something that, is, uh, uh, that keeps you nice and bundled up, and uh, you might actually get bundled up and get outside the house. And so the winter boots, you know, winterizing your wardrobe and thinking about those types of things. And this was something that was um, formerly very difficult, and in some cases impossible, because even if Allen Edmonds had someone on their email list, uh, perhaps they've never purchased from them before. And so you don't even know where that person lives necessarily. And so there's these, this vast amount of data, of these real-time signals that it's impossible for you to even collect, possibly even have, and to be able to tailor against in real time. So thinking about the changing creative and the changing nature of your customer. Let's jump into device. So when I sit at my desk at work, I've got five computers right around me. I have my desktop, I have my tablet, I have my iPhone, my Apple Watch. Uh, there's probably someone's old laptop sitting in the corner. And so it is very hard to guess at where someone is likely to be and how they choose to engage with you. And you have to be very responsive to your customers wherever they are. And so this is one of the things we did for Comedy Central, where um, the Stephen Colbert show, Rest in Peace, uh, was incorporating a video into email, but the iPhone experience was very different. It was actually a call to action at the top to download the Comedy Central app, and that would only show up if you happened to be on an iPhone. American Eagle did something very similar. So why waste that valuable real estate and show irrelevant creative if someone is just not going to engage? So again, on an iPhone, uh, and at that time, they only had an, an, an app for the iPhone, um, you'd see a banner, and if you clicked on that, you'd go to the App Store and have a chance to go download the American Eagle app and engage directly. 
on a desktop or an Android phone, the creative is, is the same. It might be mobile optimized, but it's completely changed up. So this was incredibly effective for them. They actually saw uh, a 230% lift in app downloads by simply having that very relevant call to action and having a new way to engage with their customers, mainly via their app. And finally, location. Where you are matters. And so the second you're opening an email, to be able to see offline uh, bricks and mortar stores where you can transact and you can literally get a digital marketing campaign walk outside the door, see the nearest Steve Madden, especially for products where fit and finish and trying it on really matters. Uh, being able to do that and drive people into your stores and be very tailored in that approach. And so Steve Madden is one example. And uh, the other example, Amia, which is a uh, UK-based company which lets you use your Nectar reward points and lets you see the second you open this where the local restaurants and businesses happen to be. So all super tailored and interestingly, that map accounted for 31% of the clicks. So people really enjoying and looking for uh, geo-targeted content. So finally, uh, to wrap it up, contextual marketing really has to be about you providing utility for your customers, creating a totally tailored experience, and thinking about the outcomes you want to achieve. And that might be something on your website. It might be a more content marketing approach where you're not hammering someone over the head to buy from you every time, but giving them valuable content. So that's us. We're, uh, we're Movable Inc. We're a four and a half year old company right here in New York with offices in London and Buenos Aires. And we're here to change uh, marketing with the use of brilliant and timely photos and images. Thanks, everyone.